please welcome back Patty Hosking and Mary Jo Manzanares. I love it. I think you're giving us a better applause now at the end than even in the beginning, which means you're happy. I love it. <laughs> seems like 10 minutes ago that I said, hi T-Rex, hello. <laughs> so here we are at the beginning of the close of the event. And um, we definitely want to give the most warm, respectful, thankful welcome to Visit Stockholm. They've done a phenomenal, amazing job. <laughs> Our host sponsor was also working closely with uh, Visit Sweden as our lounge sponsor, the Radisson Blue Waterfront Hotel here in Stockholm, um, uh, as well as our platinum sponsors, Jerusalem Development Authority, I Travel Jerusalem, Turkish Airlines, Israel Land of Creation. Carrying <laughs> sign, Scandic, the ABBA Museum, which I think a few of you enjoyed last evening. <laughs> Uh, Swedavia, Swedish Airports, Arlanda Express, we're transportation sponsors. And then of course our fleet of beautiful gold sponsors, Boston Museum, Visit Great Bit, Bit, Visit Britain, excuse me, Agoda, SJ Railway, Amazing Thailand, Fotografiska, Costa Brava, uh, TPB Philippines, Mall of America, and WordPress.com. So a beautiful lineup, give them a big round. Sponsors are integral to our experiences here. I know you were thrilled with the package that you received and there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. The sponsors are here to meet with you and they're devoted to your professional development. So uh, we really appreciate the time you spent in meeting with them on the showroom floor. It is now my pleasure to introduce our closing keynote speaker. Award-winning writer and photographer Lola Akhamad Orchestra. It's based right here in Stockholm. She's photographed from roughly 60 countries for various publications. Her photography is represented by National Geographic Creative, and her work has appeared in National Geographic Traveler, BBC, CNN, The Guardian, along with lots of other high-profile high publications. She is the editor-in-chief of Slow Travel Stockholm, which implores travelers to experience Stockholm on a deeper level and a slower pace. She is also a founding member of the Nordic Travel Bloggers Collective, which brings together top professional travel influencers and digital storytellers in the Nordic countries. Please join me in welcoming Lola. Can you all hear me well? Yeah. <laughs> so I want to uh, share a few words that we all know in our community, but first, I want to say it's a huge honor and privilege to be on this stage in my own city with my friends, in front of you, my friends, my colleagues. So thank you so much, TVEX, Visit Stockholm, and to the sponsors. Thank you one more time. <laughs> Back to those buzzwords, we all know them. Hmm? What, does, <laughs> what does this mean? Does anybody? You only live once. <laughs> Fear of missing out. Around the world. Live like a local. Selfies. <laughs> Glitch fairs. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> These words define the spontaneity of travel and inspire our sense of wanderlust. They inspire our work as travel bloggers, right? In a sense, as travel bloggers, we live and breathe travel. That's why we're here. Those of you, a few of you know I like to jump right in my shirt. <laughs> When people see me, they're usually surprised they can get that eye. <laughs> they're like, wait, how did you? But that comes 
constant need to travel, to always be on the road exploring, reporting back with enviable, enviable selfies, that drives our work as travel bloggers, right? Now, <laughs> I'm gonna share a few other words with you. We all know them. Hmm? Ready? I love you. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, <laughs> will you marry me? <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. It's not you. It's not you. Millennials! Please accept my condolences. It's terminal. These are words that can completely change our lives in an instant, right? As travel bloggers. <coughs> life is short and I'm not here to tell you guys how to live your lives. And life is also very unpredictable and we can't prepare for every step of the way or forecast every step. I'm not here to talk about having kids versus having kids, being a family blogger versus not being a family blogger, being a digital nomad or not. <laughs> but what I am here to talk about, transitions, because they are inevitable, right? And more importantly, I'm here to talk about transitions as tremendous opportunities, tremendous personal opportunities and career opportunities. I've been in the travel blogging community for about 10 years now, and I've witnessed so many transitions, right? From falling in love, getting married, public breakups between bloggers, uh, <laughs> having kids, maybe taking care of sick parents, or mourning the loss of a loved one. I've seen the fear and the uncertainty behind those public faces, and I've shared those same feelings as well. So I'm here to encourage us to start discovering those opportunities that lie within tra challenging transitions to fully live out our passions. So I'm gonna be talking about three reasons why we as a travel blogging community fear transitions. And then I'll be talking about five ways we can see those transitions as opportunities, right? Yeah, transitions, very, very scary things because they cause anxiety. As much as we don't like to admit it, there are three main reasons I think we travel bloggers fear transition. The first one, people will think we are settled. <laughs> settled, we're settled. Can anybody guess what quickly kills a travel blogger's street cred? What, what, what did you say? Mud gauge? Going home. <laughs> yeah, almost there. <coughs> Not traveling. <laughs> right? A travel blogger that doesn't travel. That kills your street cred. <laughs> Very quickly. And so what happens? Right? We up back on the road prematurely, before we are ready. We don't give ourselves time to fully accept our transition, whatever they are, because we don't want anybody to feel like we've settled, right? So that's one of the reasons why we fear transitions as a community. Second reason, we fear we will no longer become relevant. We fear we will no longer become relevant. I'm about the baby boomers, and I'm so glad we have a lot in the room. Yes. <laughs> Can you guess who irritated the egg out of the baby boomers? No? No? Yes. <laughs> I think that's just cross-generational. Kids just annoy parents. But 
Generation X, my generation, who are very annoying to the baby boomers. And you know who's currently getting under the skins of Generation X? <laughs> right? Growing older induces this fear of transition because we feel like what we've worked so hard to build all these years may no longer become relevant in this rapidly changing new social media landscape. So we fear it. Hmm? I remember I sent a pitch once to an editor. I thought it was a beautifully well-crafted pitch. And the editor responded and said, sorry, I don't think it's going to go well with the millennials. You know? <laughs> and that's fine. I mean, in the past, I would have tried to rework it to match a voice that wasn't my voice. Right? But this time I just said thank you for your feedback. Because what we need to do, and that's what one of the things is we keep pointing out the faults of the younger generation. So the baby boomers did it to the generation Xs, and then the generation Xs are doing it to the millennials. But what we need to do is understand that transition is inevitable. We need to embrace who we are, find our own place, and dig in. We can choose to become bitter by fighting what is inevitable, right? And risk destroying all we want to have to build. Or, this is my own personal choice, we can be like Santa 4.0. <laughs> 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 I'm Presents from that center, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Elegantly transition into the next stage of our professional life, right? <laughs> the third reason we fear transitions as a community is because we, we fear we will no longer be perceived in the same light before we became caretakers. And this has nothing to do with kids or getting married because our rules can always change at any time. I'm sure some of you have seen some version of this meme. There are many of them over the internet. It's like people getting engaged, married, having babies. I'd be like, what country am I going to next? You know, it's all over there, right? But this has nothing to do with having your own kids or your, your own minions. It's about playing that role of caretaker to someone you love. It could be a friend who is dying, or a family member who is sick. Because we feel once we come into that role, our community may start perceiving us in a different light. Right? People begin to make assumptions about us <coughs> before ever approaching us once our roles change. Oh, you have kids, so you're probably too busy, so I won't even ask you. This is a transition that a lot of us subconsciously fear. By the way, these are my own little minions. <laughs> Train them there to, to get a cheat. <laughs> okay. So what happens when life hands us, avid travelers, more responsibilities, right? What happens when we need to break away for a while to take care of loved ones? It could be an aging grandparent, a sick parent, a dying friend, what happens? It could also be just out sitting somebody else's dog or cat. I mean, it doesn't have to be really heavy stuff, right? Regardless of the weight of that responsibility, it momentarily transforms us into caretakers. It, regardless of the weight, it transforms us into caretakers. So, uh, I think this was published uh, two years ago, a fantastic article by a writer called Anne-Marie Slaughter in The Atlantic. And it says, the US economy does not value caregivers. Providers of physical and spiritual care are just as indispensable to our society as providers of income. So why don't we treat them that way? Well, one, one uh, quote from the article that I really liked was, if we do not care for others, who will care for us? We should answer those questions by reinventing ourselves yet again, competing fiercely, but caring deeply too. But the key phrase right there for me was reinventing ourselves. 
reinventing ourselves. Because right there is the beginning of how we can start tackling transitions in our lives and approaching them as opportunities. So five ways we can approach transitions in our lives as, a, as opportunities. Number one, transitions are opportunities to transform and reinvent ourselves, right? How many of us are subconsciously defined by what we do and don't even realize it? <coughs> How many of us subconsciously defined by what we do and don't realize it? So I'm going to talk a little bit about my transition to Sweden. I've been living in Sweden for about six years now. And before I moved to Sweden, I was a programmer. I was moving from this certain well-paid job as a programmer to this uncertain life as a freelancer. That, that was my major transition. And I didn't think what I did as a programmer defined who I was. Until I was sitting in a Swedish class trying to learn the language where people really didn't care that I was a programmer. This was their reaction actually. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we were all at the same starting point. We were all at the same starting point trying to learn a foreign language in a country we weren't even sure was ready to fully accept us yet. And at that point was when I, I realized, oh my God, I had let my life as a programmer define who I was as a person, right? <laughs> so think about it. How do you introduce yourself when others ask you, who are you, who, who you are? How do you introduce yourself? Hmm? Do you pick your work first or your character traits first? Just again for you to think about more. So it was when I was going through this certain, certain world of being a programmer to move into this uncertain world of travel blogging, that was when I started realizing my strengths. Right? I realized, okay, I'm a problem solver, I'm versatile, I'm a quick study, I'm creative, I'm a team those strengths started bubbling to the surface. Those strengths, right? Strengths I didn't realize I had, bubbling to the surface. Because that's what transitions do. Transitions, they bring who you truly are to the surface based on how you react to the transition. They bring who you truly are to the surface based on how you react to the transition. And if you don't like the traits that are brought to the surface, there's that word again, reinvent yourself. Transitions are opportunities to reinvent yourself. Are you, are you guys still with me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Two, transitions as opportunities. <laughs> transitions are a second chance for us to drop the facade, right? When we're going through a transition, it's an opportunity to drop the facade. Because life is too short to be someone else. To be someone else. The opportunity is to shed any personas, any public personas we have that are weighing us down. Because I know with the social media landscape, sometimes we have to play over the top personalities that may not be truly us. And what happens is the real us gets constricted and weighed down behind that persona. Are we playing extrovert when we truly are introverts? <coughs> hmm? We can only perform for others for so long. Transitions in our lives can help us break free of that. And I'll share my own story about that. Now, I have, I'm pretty sure I have a good sense of self. You know, I know who I am, I've got very thick skin. But after having my first child, I was still trying to prove to myself and subconsciously to the world that I could still do it all so effortlessly, right? I was still trying to prove to myself. 
Remember one of those fears I talked about where we feel we will not be perceived in the same light when our roles change and become take caretakers? So this led me to write a post saying, I don't want to be superwoman in 2013. And this was because I actually physically collapsed out of exhaustion trying to prove to myself. So I'll read a short excerpt from that blog. I said, you see, one of my weaknesses is this constant overbearing need to produce, to stay productive, to create, to work, to do something. Because I am my biggest competition, I'm always trying to see how much more I can do, how much more I can produce without killing over. This worked when I was single and childless. This doesn't work when one is married with an infant. Yes, there are super women out there who seem to handle family, marriage, career, everything with supernatural ease. Who seem to have mastered time management and on the surface seem to have all the answers. Since I'm not privy to what truly goes on behind their own scenes, maybe strained marriages, sleepless nights, unbelievable fatigue, undue pressure to remain relevant, I had no idea. I would rather leave being superhuman to others. So that was what I wrote in that post. And so transitions are opportunities for us to break free of that, right? Transitions as opportunities. Transitions, opportunities to connect with and create communities. They are opportunities to create, connect with and create opportunities, and uh, communities rather. Transitions in our lives are often detours. And sometimes those detours are more scenic and rewarding if we let those transitions take us on a detour. Because what they can do is they can eventually get you back on your path and passion in a much stronger way than you'd ever anticipated. Those transitions we go through in our lives. Sometimes our responsibilities have to shift based on transitions and we have to develop a temporary home base. We have to stay for a while. We have to settle into local communities or we have to create our own communities. I remember when I moved to Sweden, one of the things I missed was having this physical community of people in the same field to network with. And so that's why I became one of the chapter leaders for Travel Massive, as well as created this Nordic Travel Blogging Collective community. Now I have a question for you guys, for those who are still awake. <laughs> How many of you have a place you consider your own base, where you just travel to and come back? How many of you have a own base? All right, many hands. <coughs> How many of you have connected with a local tourism board in your own base? A few, about half of you. Do they know you are in their backyard as a blogger? Right? I mean, I see half, many, half of you guys haven't done that. They need to know because those are opportunities right there. Are we opportunities? I want to share this quote. Patience is key when we develop relationships. We develop relationships not for immediate gain, but for long-term community, which ultimately leads to work and other opportunities. So for those of you who haven't connected with your local tourism board, do that once you get home, right? This is how my relationship with Sweden again started. When I moved, I was curious about this country, this new place. And so I started exploring the country, traveling around, taking pictures. And this caught the attention of the Swedish Institute, which, which uh, is in charge of Sweden's image abroad. They run Sweden.se, the official site. And for them, they were curious. They were like, who was this foreigner? Who was so curious? That's the word right there, curious about our new own. <coughs> right? And so they got me on board to be their photo blogger for a while and I still work with them as a freelancer and a, and a photographer. But the key word right there is curiosity. Because it's most important to have the attitude of a traveler, to be curious, to be interested, constantly seeking new experiences, and paying attention to the little details. No matter where you are, 
There are beautiful places to discover in your own backyard and in your own region. You just have to be open to finding them. So when transitions force you to stop, look in your backyard. Right? Transitions as opportunities. The fourth point is transitions are opportunities to give your passions roots. Those transitions that happen in our life, they are opportunities to give <coughs> our passions roots. As much as we would like to believe it, to travel for the sole sake of travel is not the sole purpose of our existence. Yes, I know we're travel bloggers and we're always on the road, we love travel, but that's not the sole purpose of our existence, to keep traveling. So I'm going to share three quick examples from within the travel blogging community of bloggers who have gone through tremendous transi transitions in their lives, but have seen, used them as opportunities to come back stronger. For the older bloggers in here, do you guys remember this blog? Nobody? Yeah. Fantastic blog. It was Akila and Patrick. They were traveling around the world, exploring the intersection of food and culture. They loved getting beneath cultures by learning about their foods, by taking food tours. But what happened was she discovered she was pregnant about three years into their long-term travels. And so they had to stop and move back. Right? And so what she says was, because they had been exploring food and learning about different local foods, when they moved back to Atlanta, she decided to create this company called Atlanta Food Works. And she says, every time I came back to Atlanta, I wondered why no one had started a food tour here. Because Southern food has such a rich and complex history. Much of what we eat in the South today was eaten at the founding of the nation. I found that history fascinating and I thought others would too. So I decided to launch Atlanta Food Works. Our tours focus on culinary storytelling and telling the story of the city and the places we walk through through the lens of food. So they took that transition and built it and that passion that they had on the road brought it and built a profitable business because they saw that transition as an opportunity, not as we're settling, right? You guys know these guys? Bears and beans? <coughs> Bethany and Randy are a fantastic photojournalist photographer team and were full-time travel bloggers. But as they traveled around, they noticed uh, just a lack of secure pockets in the clothes women wear, right? There's nowhere to keep something valuable on you. That's not a pocket that's bulging out. And so what they did was they, they knew that creating travel supplies was gonna be easy because they knew what other travelers wanted, needed. So they moved to Boston to create this company called Speak Easy Travel Supply. I remember what I talked about transitions being detours that can bring you back even stronger. This was a detour. They took a few years to build a company that's now made them financially stronger to get back on the road. Right? So she, so she says, without beers and beans, Speak Easy would never have become the success that it is. And without Speak Easy, we, wouldn't, we would not have been able to say stuff employed and grow personally. I've always considered beers and beans my baby. Now Speak Easy is a little sister, and they both need each other to grow and thrive. And then the third example I'm going to show is uh, writer Lea Shulman behind the blog, The Future is Red. Now, Lea's family was a traveling family, traveling all, all over the world, but the big transition for them came when her daughter stopped wanting to talk to other kids. Because her daughter said, why should I say hello when I'm going to have to say goodbye? Right? That broke their hearts, so they knew they had to stop. For a while, again, transition. Because she was a professional writer and a yoga instructor before blogging, what she decided to do was create a retreat called Creative Revolution Retreats to combine that love, since she knew she couldn't move as often as she wanted. So she said, 
Creative Revolution allows me to travel regularly and see new places. I can also bring my family with me. You learn incredible things by living deep in a new country. You have to learn to live by new rules. <coughs> Since I often return to the same countries for retreats, it allows me to develop community and roots in those countries as well. Transitions, they help us build expertise with some form of anchoring. Passions, our passions, they grow roots through patience, through community, through connections, through focus. I mean, think about it when you're building a house, right? Think about building a house. You really can't raise its walls if its foundations are constantly moving. So sometimes we have to stop to give our, our, our passions roots. And then the fifth point about transitions as opportunities is this. Devastating transitions in our lives are opportunities to truly reflect and reprioritize. There is no right or wrong way to money loss. And I put a little disclaimer there because I said, as long as you're not physically or emotionally harming someone else, there really is no right or wrong way to money loss. No one really needs advice beyond warm, comforting arms, telling us all will be well in the end. Right? All will be okay. We'll be okay. It's okay to take a break, to step back from it all to assess our offline relationships. While our loved ones want to see us happy, they do. They also want us to be there for them in their deepest times of need. Right? They want us to be there. Even though they say, this is what my mom will want, I want to just travel, maybe in those few moments when she's really scared, she might want us to be there to help her through our own transition. How many of you know this blogger, Pamela? Yeah. Pamela has had quite the last two years. Quite the last two years. Um, fantastic writer too. But what happened with Pamela is, she made the conscious and loving decision to take a break from, from full-time traveling for over a year to be with her father who was dying of Alzheimer's. And so uh, Pamela shared this at the breaking post, and I'm going to, once I share this, I'll send a, I'll put a link to that post, but I want to read a little bit of what uh, Pamela shared. She said, my dad's Alzheimer's got worse, and my mind began to drift away from travel blogging towards my family. A part of me began to worry that if I was on the road all the time, my dad will forget who I was. Understand, understandably, that thought was unbearable. So I slowed down, I relocated to Quebec City, and I took mini trips. I eventually moved back into my parents' house to help my mom take care of my dad. I stopped blogging, I stopped traveling, I stopped being social. When my dad died eight months later, I was heartbroken, deeply bowed, by my grief. Several months later, I decided to travel again. My hope was that getting back on the road will somehow cure me. I would step off the plane in Hong Kong, magically become the woman I was in 2010, 2011, 2012. But I wasn't. In Chiang Mai, I realized I was not the same person, and that was OK. When life knocked on my door, it brought along challenges and experiences that would change me and the way I lived and viewed life. I still had anxiety when I was around some people, but I was comfortable with others. It was an exciting time in my life. I loved the vibe. I revamped my travel website. I picked up a project called Urban Guide Quebec I, that I had stopped when I was caring for my dad. I was productive and passionate for the first time in years, and it had nothing to do with travel blogging. And so out of Pamela's grief came this amazing new project which you should all check out. It's called Urban Guide Quebec, right? Because through that transition, she had to move back to care for her dad, and at the same time, rediscovered her love 
of Quebec. So to kind of summarize, travel itself is not the answer, even though I know we had a travel blogging conference, right? It's not itself, it's not the answer, but it is the avenue we choose. It's the avenue we choose to express our passions and choose, we choose to live out and express our passions. What would you still love to do that you can bring both on your travels and do while you're at home, right? Those traits that you can do while you're traveling and while you're at home are the semblances of your true passion. For those of you who are still trying to figure out. Ian she talked about Candice in his keynotes, and it's funny because I also have her here, because she's a fantastic example of that passion that you can bring on the road and do at home. Fantastic uh, travel illustrator. And I want to share this quote from Jody. You guys know Jody, legal nomad. She says, travel itself is not an answer. It can't save you from yourself or the demons that you have. You will bring them along with you as you roam. You can't absolve yourself of your responsibilities or the monotony of routines that will appear the minute you stop moving. And if you travel to escape that move, it will eventually find you. So, as a community, we need to subconsciously stop apologizing for our life transitions because they are inevitable. I know we feel like we are going to let our readers down, let our audiences down, but we need to subconsciously apologizing for them. You know who I think, who I feel does transitions really well if you actually can do a transition. There's one of us in here that does them really well. <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorite portraits of Matt I took when he was living in Stockholm. I shot that, shot that portrait of him. But what I really love about the way uh, Matt approaches transitions because he understands they are inevitable. They are part of life. So I'm going to share a few blog titles from Nomadic Matt. Why I left New York and moved to Austin. Why it's time to hang up the backpack. Starting again in Chiang Mai. Searching for a more balanced life. How I finally came to terms with the own body inside me. Oh, the death of the nomad. The end of my solo travels. And then I moved to Stockholm. And then I didn't move to Stockholm. And this is where the journey ends. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it because Matt understands that transitions are chances to grow and explore more of what you want and leave behind what you most definitely don't want. That's why I'm urging us to try and be a little bit more apologetic about life, about the transitions we go through in life. Transitions are chances to grow and explore more of what you want and leave behind what you don't want. So we need to elegantly own the choices we've made, be unapologetic about them, and be honest with ourselves. Most of us travel because we are curious. We're curious about the world. We want to see new cultures, try new food, see new places, experience new things. We have an innate curiosity to, to explore and experience and share the world we see. Do we suddenly become less curious because we have to stay in one place? Do we? I mean, think about it. Do you become less curious because you have to just sit for a month somewhere? Right? And if so, maybe it's time to reassess our motives for travel and be completely honest with ourselves. We need to reassess why we travel if we become less curious when we have to sit for a while. I want to share um, about this uh, post. So Ellen Barron is a fantastic photographer, and oh my god, I'm sounding like Donald Trump. Fantastic, oh my god. <laughs> no. Ellen. But Ellen, she's a fantastic uh, journalist and photographer, and she wrote this blog post two years ago. She says, where would you go if you only had a few weeks to live? Where would you go? <coughs> so I ran over to her blog and left a comment. And this is what I said. I said, if I were to travel to the very end, every single day and journey will be spent with my family traveling alongside and exploring with me. Because the older I get, the more I realize time with the ones dearest and nearest to me takes priority. 
Because transitions are not about giving up your dreams. Transitions are not about giving up our dreams. They're about sharing our dreams, right? Sharing our dreams. So the great uh, 21st century philosopher, <laughs> Bono says, he sings this, one of my favorite songs. Any U2 fans in the house? Okay. Um, <clears throat> you hurt yourself, you hurt your lover, and then you discover what you thought was freedom is just free. Because there's a very thin line between freedom and selfishness, right? Very, very thin line. We shouldn't live lives of regret. We shouldn't, but we should expand our approach to tackling life changes as they come. We shouldn't live lives of regret. We need to become serial opportunists. That's what we need to do. I am. I consider myself serial opportunist. We need to become serial opportunists, opportunists because at every end, there is a beginning. So I'm going to end with a quote from Mark and Angel at Life in a fantastic, <laughs> stop using that word, <laughs> fantastic uh, blog post called 40 Lessons for Finding Strength in Our Times. This is what they say. They say, new opportunities are out there waiting for you. Nobody gets through life without losing someone they love something they need, or something they thought was meant to be. But it is these losses that make us stronger and eventually move us toward future opportunities. Embrace those opportunities. Enter new relationships and new situations, knowing that you are venturing into unfamiliar territory. Be ready to learn. Be ready for a challenge. And be ready to experience something or meet someone that just might change your life forever. I did. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That was such a beautiful send-off. Thank you so much, Lola. I think it brought tears to our eyes for many of us. We're very happy, happy for your beautiful success and family, and we very much enjoyed being here in Stockholm, your home. Made me cry, that's not fair. <laughs> I have to say goodbye. Uh, it's the end of TBEX here in Stockholm, Sweden. We would love to invite you with open arms to the Philippines. We'll be in Manila in October the 13th through the 16th. We would love to have as many of you there as possible. It fits into your schedule and your lives. Um, that we currently have our blogger fam trip applications open for the Philippines, and you do have to be registered to apply, but there are some amazing opportunities there for you to come to the Philippines and create content while you're on site, of course. And we'd also love to invite all of you to the lounge here adjacent to the keynote afterwards to enjoy us for a farewell and a send-off. And um, we just want to thank you again for coming to Stockholm.